Hello everyone, Mark Sketchin again, and uh, it's time to talk about painting. Now, uh, when you start painting, please make sure that you have a high resolution model um, and uh, your details are quite close ready. Now, you can paint in an earlier stage, but if you start painting, it will increase your file size. So, usually it's not the last, but um, not the earliest uh, uh, process to go through. So first of all, uh, this is the only model I have now. The original one is the Dynamesh model and uh, I'm ready to paint. I have 1.1 uh, 1 million uh, polygons. If I'm turning on Shift F, uh, a, po a couple poly groups are visible and these tiny polygons are relatively small. So uh, that means uh, I can even uh, create a portrait that could be shown as a close-up because of the details. Now, so turning it off and first let me see the easiest way to start painting. Now, we have a material, a matcap gray material. This matcap gray is using an image um, as a base. Now, it's true for all matcap materials. If you want to create quite a distortion-free uh, painting usually is uh, better if you start from a standard material. Now many skin shades are using the skin shade 4 material but if you start with the skin shade 4 it's way too bright so it is it is great but it is way too bright to paint with so it's uh, also not really good for modeling so once we are ready with the basic painting, when we can turn this on and switch uh, the skin shade material uh, anytime. But uh, for a simple start, it's good if you just start with a fast shader. So there is a bright white color right now, and this is how it looks. And uh, let me check my light source because, uh, okay, my light source is a little bit offset. So I will drag it up move it to the center. This is the default setting and now it's a little bit better for the painting. So this is a s normal standard light set. Okay, uh, first of all let me find a kind of a skin tone uh, that might do the job. So I want to flood this uh, model with this skin tone color. So. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much satisfied with this one. So uh, that's cool. Uh, going up to the color and filling object. So I will fill the object. And this time, uh, let me see if it's working or not. So if I start changing my color again, uh, now it's clearly visible that the object is flooded. So uh, even if RGB is not turned on, this color fill object is working. Now, if you want to get rid of the color because you are disturbed by that and, and instead of painting, you want to start, um, you want to follow modeling, you can always turn on, don't forget, this um, um, brush icon that indicates the color. Um, now, okay, so the basic way to paint is you can just jump in, turn on RGB, turn on Z add, and start painting with a different color. Okay, here we go. We can start painting. Now it's quite pointless to use um, painting like this because it's just so clean, and uh, in real life, there is no such clean uh, colors on a skin, especially on a skin. So I will uh, make a couple adjustments, but first, when you start using a standard brush and you are using the default standard brush, lazy mouse is turned on, and that that is just uh, the tiny stroke. So you can start using that stroke. It's pretty cool, but uh, it slows down painting. So it's good for modeling, but it slows down painting. Uh, sometimes, if you want to use a specific style of paint. It's also handy, but right now we don't want to use it. So stroke, lazy mouse, lazy mouse, turn off. And the same thing is done if you're pressing L, that will also turn off lazy mouse. 
and the colorization is much faster if you are if you have this turned off okay now let me undo this these changes and take a look at something else so first of all I want to create a shade that's a little bit darker uh, and add some colorizations for the neck for example usually the neck is a little bit darker so uh, but instead of using the simple dots method I will use a different type of stroke now this type of stroke uh, that's quite popular with painting is the spray and color spray now let me start with the simple spray so spray is selected and when this one is selected we have placement scale color color intensity and flow variance mouse average is usually set at 4 and it's quite good if you set it at 4 now let me show what it does so when you start painting it will start uh, scattering your so let me look for a larger surface for example at the back so when you start painting it will start scattering your color okay it's pretty good but right now the the scaling is a little bit off so I want to add another variation now what type of variation so here we have placement so if placement is higher what's the result if placement is higher the scatter is wider so that's a good point that's a good point now probably you notice that we have a quite harsh um, border here if we want to smooth it out we can use the shift and shift is actually blurring so when you are painting you can use shift to blur your uh, colors okay now uh, to add another variation we can turn on alpha so by default these are my stroke this is my stroke but if I want to add an even more variation I can turn on alpha 08 for example and now I have the scattering effect that comes from the stroke and I also have an alpha uh, and the two combined will create a kind of a freckled uh, surface now this is good I like to use it in many uh, painting applications this is a quite good thing to start with it's a fast way to add some variety to a mesh now I'm working uh, right now in a, in a symmetrical way so the symmetry is established uh, if you want to paint unique textures um, probably you will use symmetry at the very early stages but later on you might want to switch to something else okay now as you see we have an underlying color and the base color and this one is blending uh, this is a pretty nice feature and if you want you can adjust the scale by uh, changing the size of the alpha uh, placement could be a little bit lower um, now maybe the flow variance if it's higher uh, you can also add more variety okay so the flow is the intensity of the drops all right now what happens if you want to add these variations in a colorful way now for that we have a different type of spray and that is the color spray so alpha is still the same I have this color spray loaded on and right now color is just 0 0.2 let me crank this up sorry mouse over just set back to 4 but crank this up color to a higher degree and start working on the head so as you see because it has a quite high degree it will really change the hue it will really change the variation of the color now if it is lower it will be a little bit better so 0 0.2 is the default 0 0.3 is quite nice also so let me add some more more colorizations here and there probably around the neck this was the original idea this was too orange so let me put it more red and a lighter red 
so probably it's better for the neck okay I'm exaggerating the thing so where where you see more blood you might want to add more uh, lilac type of color um, if you want to blend the two because you have two harsh colors so here I have this lila I have this um, lila I have this um, uh, orangish uh, skin so if I want to blend the two I can drag and pick the, the some kind of an in-between color and then follow the painting with that in-between color so that's also a good technique to mix uh, the colors uh, as you wish now when you are painting human skin uh, you want to pay attention oh it's just way too orange so I can look for a kind of neutral color okay especially the head is usually brighter and uh, you have less uh, yellow here but you have a little bit more uh, kind of a lighter skin tone around the mouth okay around the eyes that's cool um, probably the ears are a little bit more reddish so let me pick a red color add to the ears add to the nose it's also true for the nose intensity is pretty high so it's air RGB intensity I'm using a, a pen tablet but um, so even for that it was a relatively high correct the colors a bit so this way it's pretty fast to add some details just by using the color spray okay uh, you can also mix blue and green uh, where you have a little bit more um, veins uh, you can add blue for example here where the skin is a little bit softer you might want to add some bluish tones uh, so that works also sometimes under the eye uh, you can add or um, uh, at the jugular if you wish if, if there's cold also uh, sometimes you have this bluish tone around the chin so uh, the RGB intensity is way too high so around the side okay it's, it's even a little bit more gray grayish oh, let me undo and add more gray so technically that's it so more man like uh, the figure okay the back is still needs some work but as you see there's a huge difference from the starting point uh, just with a couple color settings and uh, color samples you can pick it up and and adjust uh, the changes as you need okay now this is a kind of a traditional method uh, you can also use textures so you can combine um, a kind of a skin texture um, this one is not really a skin texture but uh, it will work um, it's a part of the board but it will work with uh, the toes now so because of we have alpha and stroke we can also use any type of image so if you're looking for a actual skin image you can load it up here so importing loading it and using so now instead of a color I'm using this texture if I don't know if you I want to turn it off the texture off and now uh, this uh, color is active again okay so drag pick let's change the tones blurring them out it's also working nicely so this is the first method to in a classical way to paint on your model of course you can use smaller brushes uh, you can turn off the color spray uh, change the dots so adding some details and painting on uh, some crazy things uh, adding up intensity so using the alpha uh, it slows down the work but if you turn off the alpha it's a little bit stronger so it is technically it's up to you uh, how you use it now another a way uh, to paint is using uh, spotlight the spotlight basic um, solution to use spotlight is to use it as a kind of an image palette so um, you can go up here and uh, within the texture you can import your texture let me import my skin tones first 
and um, I will use it by enabling texture selecting the new texture that is loaded and then there's an add to spotlight button so when you hit add to spotlight it will open up spotlight and it will open up lightbox as well so right now I'm just tapping in and lightbox will disappear okay now this is my uh, skin tone set it's just a downloaded image it's nothing special uh, here's a dial and if I'm moving into the dial and selecting the center I can move away the dial if I'm uh, tapping outside the dial and start moving that will move the image so it's a good thing move the dial move the image first option is uh, the scale so uh, you can scale it down and move it aside okay so this moves the dial but if you are aside you can move the image relative to the dial and once you have this image scaled down to the needs uh, then you can also rotate as you wish so there's not no big deal just let me rotate it back and you can also resize uh, the way you want okay so now this image is loaded how to enter and how to exit from uh, uh, the spotlight if you press Z it will deactivate the dial now spotlight is still visible but the dial is not working anymore um, a big question if you want to steal a color if you want to pick a color from here uh, is it working so let me check I would go in go in on a pick but pick is not sense so it's it's gonna pick up the colors from the from the spotlight palette now if I'm moving to the object uh, right now it can sense the object so it, it will recognize that there's an underlying uh, information of the surface but it it can do nothing with the uh, spotlight yet so what to do if you want to use the spotlight enable the dial that will enable the layer of the spotlight now you can use the pick pick your color turn off spotlight and now you can paint with that hey but something happens uh, when you are using the spotlight and you are not painting through spotlight then you have to adjust your brush let me show what I'm talking about here's my spotlight image let me turn the figure select the brush size make it a little bit larger and I'm putting the figure below the spotlight and start painting and when I'm moving away the figure this is what happens the spotlight symmetry was turned on the spotlight is actually projecting onto the surface now if you are somewhere else but not below spotlight you cannot paint but if you're touching the spotlight you can paint on it on, on the model so what to do we can turn this sensitivity on and off so if you're going up to the brush and set to there is something called samples you can turn on and off spotlight projection now by default the spotlight projection is turned on for most of the brushes so I'm turning it off and right now uh, if I'm stealing another color so Z enabled spotlight is active I can pick the color I want this is the color I'm looking for turning off Z and now I can start just painting with that particular color so this way I can work on my viewport and using these images that I have here as references and nothing else if I want to paint through the image there is a chance I want to use a different type of image instead of this reference palette so uh, let me load a texture um, so texture and uh, another texture and this one okay import this, this will be a head so Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, it's not added to spotlight yet so I have to select the image and click add to spotlight um, automatically appearing lightbox so instantly when I start moving it will disappear now as you see these two images are automatically rescaled now 
when I have this object selected, it will highlight with red so I can scale it down. Or of course, I can rotate it. It's not a big deal. Um, I have a, a pin spotlight. Now, pin spotlight is, uh, uh, we don't care uh, right now. There's a spotlight radius. It will be important, but first, let me drag this image to the center. Let me turn off spotlight and use the zoom tools and rotate my figure according to the image. And uh, it's barely visible, but it is there. So we haven't made any adjustments yet. There are plenty of adjustments. And now I will start painting through. Now, is it working or not? It's not working. Why? Just remember, I was turning off spotlight projection. So spotlight projection, turn it back off. Now I can use the spotlight projection, looking for the matching reference point, eyes and mouth and nose. Now I can paint through. But it is really a pain in the ass if I'm just painting through the object because this, this layer is always visible. Now what to do if you don't want to make it always visible? Go back in spotlight. Uh, I forgot to mention, but to turning off spotlight is Shift Z, and turning back on is um, Shift Z again. So once you have uh, an image loaded into spotlight, you can always turn it on and off. Um, now Z is enabled, and here we have a spotlight radius value, and this will be very very handy. Just let me start dragging. Uh, to the opposite direction and as you see there is a tiny tiny kind of a ripple effect on the image now this means when you turn off the dial the spotlight will disappear and will only appear at the area where your brush is covering the model so it's a little bit easier to look for your reference okay so adjusting it i see the model and i can see how matches are working and turn off shift z spotlight and now i have a little bit better area for the eye okay press z again now the guy is visible and uh, i can also adjust opacity so by default if i want to adjust my figure and adjust uh, the overlap i can use opacity i can use the combination of the spotlight radius so just let me turn off now spotlight dial and add this area for the mouth move the figure a bit and add the mouth there we're looking for the exact position now it's much better okay so this way you can also paint with spotlight uh, there are other features so first let me switch it back so spotlight now it's pinned so it's pinned to my brush uh, in some cases if you want to use it as a stamp or something like that uh, it's a good idea to use but uh, rarely um, useful if you just want to paint a portrait like this uh, the other feature is opacity we already had that uh, fade is uh, important if you are trying to changing uh, over opacity especially if you have two overlying uh, uh, textures so just let me show it scale it up and now uh, the, this image has no fade but I can fade it out so in this case I can see the underlying other uh, image so that's a good point um, there's another uh, couple organization tricks so you can tile proportional it will recognize the uh, actual size of the image and um, will uh, uh, scale down the images uh, according to the original size tile selected will uh, top the selected one on a hierarchy so everything else will be scaled down uh, there's a tile unified usually it's a good starting point to use the tile unified you can change the front and back uh, options so you can create mixtures you can overlap images like uh, 
uh, if you want to painting through uh, this image and also this one uh, then you can use Z and now you can uh, uh, paint uh, and combine these two so you can add, adjust the shade so let me adjust the fade of Schwarzenegger and now turning off Z and now I have a mix within spotlight okay so it's a quite cool thing uh, if you know how to use it it takes time uh, but it's really effective now let me turn it back on so I'll go back to the time mode and um, let me select the Schwarzenegger portrait and change the fade I don't want to adjust the fade this way so it's normal 100% and look for the other options so you can change the front back and forth uh, which ones here and there you can remove from uh, the uh, spotlight of course you can flip it's quite handy if you wish uh, there's a way to tile the image but it's um, so in a portrait it's not really useful but if you have a pattern you want to paint through the model then this tiling feature can be useful now another thing that might be uh, restores a reset uh, might be pretty cool if you are using the nudge now nudge can do uh, something very very important for us so uh, let me turn off nudge uh, for now and go to the normal scale mode so let me turn on turn it off scale up a bit the figure I want to change opacity because I want to see how uh, the nudge takes its toll so I will select nudge and start moving around now can you see how I can move my content so this image is actually put on the plane so uh, the portrait is lying on a 3d plane and this 3d plane has um, a, um, polygon uh, data so if you want to use you can use your uh, tools to restore the image you can even use a shift to smooth out things now it's quite a cool way to adjust if your texture is not fitting to your model okay now it is not Arnold anymore but uh, at least uh, kind of a bright eye figure okay so smoothing can help a bit and it's easy to adjust now a couple of tools left uh, we can clone so if we have something to select we can uh, tap on and uh, cloning off objects so the clone option actually is working uh, you have to move the dial for the cloning source so I will move to the eye and now I can clone the eyes okay so this is this is actually my selector so I move to the mouth and now I can add another mouth here and there it's, it's a quick repair it's very very good now uh, there's a smooch option it's different from nooch because nooch is 3d based uh, smooch is just simply it's like smearing uh, the content oh it's quite drastical but so uh, you can give it a try uh, contrast is quite self-explanatory you can add but honestly I really don't like these brushes within spotlight you can use them as a necessity so if you don't want to leave that brush going into Photoshop edit your image it's quite a quite a good uh, idea to use them but uh, be careful okay so these are quite aggressive saturation and hue if you press alt it will invert the effect so you can remove if you're using the default one it will be just quite strong uh, but uh, you can change the overall hue you can change the overall saturation intensity so there's many many things now here comes a weird effect with uh, uh, the spotlight if you have an image that contains a lot of black areas uh, when you are using something like this the intensity if the intensity reaches a level where your dark areas will be 100% black 
uh, uh, many of the content will disappear. Uh, the reason is because uh, within ZBrush, by default, the black color is uh, equals with alpha. So that is a kind of a see-through um, value. So if you have an image that has many, many black areas and you see this kind of a broken up image with kind of a missing part, that might be because of the missing uh, black uh, areas. Now, there's a chance you don't want to use them, so uh, stay away from 100% uh, black images or with too dark areas. Okay, so technically that is Spotlight and that is the basics uh, of painting. Uh, there are many, many more, but uh, this is the fundamentals. Of course, you can mix up materials and other things, but these are the basic uh, strategies to to start painting so thank you for your attention and see you next time goodbye